Okay, today we're going to be looking at fractions. So tomorrow, make sure you bring in the definition for a numerator, a denominator, equivalent fractions, and um, simplest form. All right, so let's look at some fractions. So you got fractions, you have one and a half, 11 twelfths, one eighth, one twelfth, one and two tenths. And if you notice, fractions can talk about anything. So it's just remember it's talking about whenever you've got time, how much time left, um, if you're sharing a pizza, how much of the pizza you got, how much of a fruit you need, it can be done about anything. You know, you've got different fractions. You have the uh, mixed numbers. There's improper fractions in simplest form. All right, so let's kind of break this down. So loosely talking, what's a fraction? So it's a qu quantity that cannot be represented by a whole number. So it's part of a number. So fractions, why do we need them? Let's look at the following situation here. All right, can you finish this whole cake? If not, how many cakes did you eat? One is not the answer because the whole cake wasn't finished. So we need to find a different way to explain this. Because I didn't eat none either, so it wouldn't be zero because I ate something. So that's what suggests that we need to find a different kind of number, a part of a number. So a fraction is... An ordered, pair, an ordered pair of whole numbers. The first one is usually written on the top of the other, such as one-half or three-fourths. So A over B. A being your numerator, B being your denominator on the bottom. So here we go. The denominator tells, tells us how many congruent pieces the whole is divided into. So this number cannot be zero because you obviously have to have at least a piece. So the bottom just tells you how many of the pieces there are that everything is cut into. The numerator tells us how much such pieces are being considered. So how many you have or how much was left over. It's the, it's the number that you're talking about. So how much of a pizza do we have below? So first we have to, to know the size of the first pizza, what the whole was. So we divide into eighths and the congruent pieces will be, with your denominator being eight, your numerator would be seven because it asks how much pizza do we have. So our fraction of the pizza would be seven eighths because I have eight pieces that make me a whole pizza and there's seven left. All right. So when we're looking at fractions, we got to talk about what's equivalent fractions. So a fraction can, equivalent fractions is when a fraction can have many different appearances. These are called equivalent fractions, just like equivalent decimals. It's the same value. It's just written and talked about in different ways. So here's half of a pizza. I mean, I'm sorry, half of a cake because it's divided into two pieces. But you could also have congruent pieces that are fourths. So it'd be one half is equivalent to two fourths if I were to cut it into fourths. You could also cut it into six. So then I would have three out of the six. So therefore, one half, two fourths, and three six are all equivalent to each other. All right, you could also cut it into eight. So then four out of the eight pieces. So that makes you four eighths. So therefore, now one half, two fourths, three six, and four eighths are all equivalent fractions. So you would take and generalize this or simplify this to lowest terms of one half. Whoops. Which would be, nope, there's some algebra. If I were to talk, how many slices I was talking about, that's where you'd multiply each to find the equivalent fractions to go from here. To make equivalent fractions, if I needed it to be over six, then I would n would be three. Because remember, whatever you multiply the bottom, you'd have to multiply the top as well. All right. Well, those popped up. How do we know that two fractions are the same? So this, we cannot tell whether two fractions are the same until we reduce them to the lowest term. So a fraction, this is talking about when a fraction is in simplest form or it's reduced. We can't find a whole number other than one, of course, that we can divide into both the numerator and the denominator. So if I had six tenths, it's not reduced because two can divide into both ten and six. So I can make the whole, the fraction of 2 over 2, which is really just one whole. So I'd take and divide by that, by 2 over 2, and so you would have 3. That would give you 3 fifths, which would be equivalent to your 6 tenths. All right? Same thing down here. If I have 35 fortieths, well, I could divide both the top and the bottom number by 5. So again, 5 over 5 gives you 
basically your, I always call it the magic number of one because really it's just one whole, but it's five over five. So if I divide 35 by five, I get seven and 40 by five, I get eight. So that'd be seven eighths. All right. So be sure to bring in your definitions for simplest form equivalent fractions, numerator, and denominator tomorrow for us to add to our spiral. And we'll be looking at um, finding equivalent fractions, simplifying fractions, defining equivalent fractions some more in class. All right, see y'all tomorrow.